Hey Gemini, welcome to your reading for July 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. Also, you'll find in the description box that there are uh, links back up to calculate your Eastern and Western charts. I did have those up in the past, but I took a lot of that stuff down because there was just too much going on in my my description box, but I really wanted to put those links back in, so I did so. And I did so so that you guys could, you know, investigate for yourselves and see which ones resonate the most for you. Um, I personally tend to resonate a lot more with my Eastern chart than my Western, but um, that's totally up to you, okay? So check it out if you want to. Also keep in mind that these messages are timeless just because they're coming through for the month of July does not mean they have to resonate for July. It could resonate at any moment, okay? All right, so Gemini, let's get into your energies here for your pre-shuffle. Now, I do have some pre-shuffle energies. Um, actually, I do want to put that there. Um, when I was channeling your energy, when I was just kind of like settling into it, so I, I felt I started to feel really giddy and like really excited. Um, I couldn't really tell what it was. Uh, maybe I was thinking, well, maybe it's just because, you know, it's the summer, blah, blah, blah. But um, I, I feel... But then I started looking at the cards as they started coming out and I was and the first card that came out was the Ace of Wands, but it came out in the reverse. There is a new opportunity that's coming forward towards you or that may be right in front of you, but it's still a little bit blocked. Um, and uh, now the rest of the cards that came out here, you have the Three of Wands, the Fool and the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords technically is Libra, but it could also be you, Gemini, as an air sign, or it could be Aquarius. Um, but to be quite honest, for the most part, I don't think this Queen of Swords is you. At least that's not what I'm feeling like. I feel like this Queen of Swords is the energy or the individual that is blocking this Ace, I'm sorry, this Ace of Wands energy here, this new passionate direction. Because I feel like you, Gemini, want to take a leap of faith somehow um and with the three of wands this is definitely a return on the investment uh, like waiting for a return on an investment but the three of wands is now comes after the two of wands in which you had to make a decision i feel like you really have made a decision you've made a choice with the ace of wands here but following through with that choice now three of wands is blocked a bit because of an overly logical point of view now in essence that maybe that is you because then also you do have at the bottom of the deck you do have the nine of swords so there are some sort of anxieties here some fears that are in fact blocking your path and the queen of swords energy is the individual is like the personal individual energy if that even make what the hell does that mean i don't know <laughs> but the queen of swords is it's unnecessarily cutting things away or rejecting things blocking things saying no to be quite honest that's what this feels like here i do feel like whatever choice you've made here is very much in alignment and the new the the, the leap of faith that you want to take the, the cycle that you want to start the new beginning that you want to have is very much in alignment with you it is very much in alignment with your path three of wands but there is an overly critical or overly analytical nature here that is causing the blockage and the anxiety. Okay? Okay. But it still feels, I mean, it still feels good. I still feel like you're excited about some, ooh, ooh, yes, hunty, look at this. <laughs> we have, the Knight of Cups, the Page of Cups, the Six of Pentacles, and the Emperor coming out now. Woof! With the Ace of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Yes! Okay! So, so, Gemini, <laughs> we're talking about a masculine energy here. An Emperor. Who wants to come forward, who has some, oof, who's got some love to give, who has got some love to give. And this is an energy of someone's been dreaming about something like this for the longest time. Maybe it's you, Gemini. 
if you're not this individual that wants to come forward, if you're not, the, if you're not this masculine, maybe you're the one that's been really dreaming about this, about this even exchange of give and take of a really compassionate and romantic partner or someone who's not afraid to express themselves to live in a, a bit of a from to be a bit vulnerable and you need to be vulnerable if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody okay or maybe you gemini are this masculine that has been dreaming about an opportunity to really let your heart be open and to really have and even exchange six of pentacles. There may even be a situation from the past in which you, things were not balanced and you, you, you know, you were not able to live with an open heart. You were not able to be vulnerable, but now you are there with this emperor energy. There's this level up this, 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 you know, pulling up, pulling up your big boy pants and saying, you know what, I'm ready for this. I want to do this. Um, the, the, the emperor is also an energy of commitment, like an emperor, the emperor energies, they, they commit. OK, and they honor those commitments because the, the emperor is the master of his or her domain. All right. Um, you know, and they when they're when they're balanced and positively aspected, they take care of their people. They take care of their realm. OK, so it feels like somebody here is getting into an energy of wanting to. I'll say it this way. It's because it's, it's it was it was said to me it's a, a number of times and that's how it's coming through. So I'm going to say it this way but an energy of manning up. But not in the sense of like wanting to fight somebody, in the sense of being a mature adult. Yeah, Gemini, all right. Cool, so let's get into the rest of this now. One shuffle here. All right. Here we go, Gemini. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Geminis, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of July, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Gemini, I am seeing purple. I'm gonna give this five shuffles for you. I am seeing purple, uh, which is a color of divine wisdom uh, and divine knowledge. I'm hearing seeking the truth and the answers. Two, this is three. For some of you, you're really trying to see past a lot of the illusion that's put forward in our world. You're trying to find the deeper meaning behind things or the deeper truths for. You're gaining some sort of wisdom or knowledge. That's a good thing, Gems. It's a very good thing. And five, for my Geminis, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, here we go. All right, Gemini, overall energy you have, ooh, four of pentacles, okay. It's not such a bad thing. I do feel like some of you are holding, are working on holding on to your finances, probably trying to save some money, um, trying to save up. I, I feel like you might be trying to save up for a major per a purchase um, or like a major step. This, I, I, mm, I'm kind of getting energies of, you know, building a nest egg for uh, a future family situation. Okay. Now this also could talk about you being in the process of fortifying your foundation, but also maybe even letting things go that you may have been holding on to from the past, which is kind of in alignment with the energies of that purple energy that I was seeing with seeking higher wisdom. Okay. Breaking through, breaking free of the breaking yeah breaking the mold there it is okay underneath the four of pentacles you do have the three of swords okay under the three of swords you have the three of pentacles 
And then finally, oh, there's that Queen of Swords again. Okay. Um, hmm. There's a lot of change happening for you, Gemini. Because now this Queen of Swords energy does feel more like you than it did in the pre-shuffle. But now I get, now I see why you may be in this energy of like maybe making some sort of unnecessary, uh, unnecessary cuts, maybe being a little unnecessarily harsh or critical, or maybe just a little too critical, or maybe you're just in a very critical analytical state right now. But that's because you're doing some work to, to heal from past circumstances, past situations, or you're needing to. Maybe this Queen of Swords energy is so strong right now, is so, uh, is really, oh, uh, yeah. Maybe some of, some of you might be refusing to let go of certain things, and the Queen of Swords energy is coming forward to get you to just cut it away. For, uh, for some of you. For others of you, you are in fact in the process of making these cuts, of healing from some heartbreak, of rebuilding yourself, or going through some sort of self-mastery in terms of heartbreak that you felt in the past that may have made, helped to make you feel, be really cold, really closed off, um, and guarded, and all that with this Four of Pentacles energy. But it looks like now you're in the process of healing or clearing that up, which is nice. Getting into your reading here, first half and second half of the reading, could, you could look at it as first half, second half of the month. I recommend you look at it as first half, second half of the reading because energies are fluid, time is an illusion, and the messages could just interflow, intertwine in all of different kinds of places, okay? But whatever resonates for you, if it does resonate as first half, second half of the month, please take it as that, yes? First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading, Gemini, you have, there you are, the lovers. Um, yeah, I, there is, there is a, a very strong, I want to say divine connection out there that you are experiencing. I do feel like you are in a sense aware of it, even if you don't really know even if you wouldn't necessarily define it or know to define it as a divine connection, it is so because it is in fact helping you heal in many, many different ways that you, some of you may not have even been aware that you needed healing in these ways, okay? The lovers is coupled with, oh shit, the emperor again. <laughs> Look at that. Um, wow, divine connection here. You could be dealing with an Aries. You also could be dealing with another Gemini. But whatever this connection is, it's causing you to really mature. It's influencing you to really mature. Even if the relationship doesn't fully manifest between the two of you into like a, a committed partnership between the two of you, I do feel like whatever you're experiencing in terms of this connection with this person is aligning you with some sort of committed relationship ultimately, some, somewhere down the line once you're ready for it. You know, once the circumstance aligns well enough. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Gemini, you have the hanged man. This is Piscean energy. You could have a Pisces in your life. You could be... Um, you could have Pisces in your chart. But here, this is enlightenment. This is um, gaining a new perspective, which is what was coming through with that purple energy of the divine wisdom coming through. The hanged man is coupled with, oof, the two of swords though. Well, that's okay. I mean, in all honesty, I do... I don't mind seeing the two of swords here when it's coupled with the hanged, hanged man. And this actually could be what could be stopping you, Gemini, or maybe the other person that you're connecting with or connecting to in this divine connection. Yes, it, this energy of the hanged man could be what's keeping either of you from making a choice or following through with some sort of decision that they've made. 
because there is still some sort of enlightenment that needs to come forward first before you can see clearly enough to now take action. Two of Swords. Okay? This really doesn't feel like a refusal to make a decision or a refusal to see something clearly or differently with this Two of Swords in this situation when it's coupled with the Hanged Man like this. This literally feels like you really just can't see enough or you don't, you literally just don't have enough information or you just don't have the right perspective right now to see something the way it, it would need to be seen in order for action to be taken, okay? Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, you have, ooh, damn, ooh, the Five of Swords, whoa, okay. Um, but honestly, this Five of Swords energy is an extension of the Three of Swords energy that I was feeling. And this really does feel like the past. This could have something to do with your reputation, either yours or the other person that you're connecting with. Something's coming through. I'm just trying to, I'm working on how to put it into words, how to define it. Um, it, it. It just feels like for some of you, you are up against some others that don't, may not necessarily see you in the highest light. Um, and you're kind of having to combat that. But in all honesty, and I guess why I'm having so much trouble putting this into words is the fact that Someone else's opinion of you really doesn't matter in the long run. It's really how you feel about yourself. Oh, that's what it is. So, okay. So some people may have, I don't know, may have a valid reason to feel a certain type of way about you. But that doesn't mean that you have to internalize it, nor does that have to mean that you have to, that you are that you, it's necessary or you're required to continue acting in the way that may have gotten you that icky reputation to begin with. You don't have to feed into this energy because this is a lose-lose situation, okay? And honestly, this really does kind of feel like, Gemini, that no matter what you do or what you say or how you change your approach or your actions or your behavior, these other people that feel a certain way about you probably are not going to change the way they see you. And that has literally nothing to do with you. Like, you have no control over that, okay? Five of Swords is coupled with Ten of Pentacles. I just heard an established way of being that potentially is actually, I feel like is coming to an end because the 10 of pentacles, yes, is about time, is about investment. It also can represent family and career, but I also see the 10 of pentacles as a lesson learned in the physical world. And this five of swords energy that actually was a way of being a certain behavioral pattern. I feel like the lesson is really has been or is being is starting to really be learned here and put to rest and that cycle is closing out. And I do feel like this romantic or d divine partnership here or this really strong connection that you have with someone is absolutely influencing you to to mature into this emperor energy. Okay? With time and with patience. This is surely happening, is what I'm hearing. Okay, closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Gemini, you have, oof, justice, Libra energy. You could be dealing with a Libra, you could have a Libra in your chart. But justice is being served here. And I, this doesn't feel like a bad thing. Like, okay, I, I know f some of you are kind of, I feel it. Some of you are cringing right now. Like, oh God, oh God, what justice is going to come my way? Like, what kind of karmic retribution am I, am I going to have to deal with? Relax. It doesn't feel as bad as you, as you might think. It's just balancing of the scales, literally. That's all it is. Yeah, there may be some karmic backlash here or there, but... Uh, don't get, I'm hearing, don't get too paranoid. Don't allow yourself to get too overwhelmed. It's really not as serious or as bad as you think, okay? 
Because honestly, like if we're talking about a situation in which you have a certain reputation with a certain group of people, and the balances and the scales balance out, okay, yeah, there may be some things you have to, some some licks you may need to take, but also some of this balance or this justice kind of feels like these other people that have this certain reputation or certain view of you might actually get a little bit of backlash too because they're not it doesn't feel like they're being too compassionate now i don't know exactly what you may have done in the situation but also like everybody deserves compassion so they may they may get a little bit of a slap on the wrist there too you know like don't don't stress about it it's it's it, ultimately it's a good thing <laughs> You're coming out alive. That's all that matters. All right, cool. <laughs> Justice is coupled with, ooh, the queen of pentacles. Oh. This is, this is wife and mother. This is wifey status here. This is wifey material. All right. I, I feel like for some of you, if we are, if I am, if I am communicating or channeling for a masculine entity right now, whether you're a man or a woman, um, you just you you just resonate with or embody more of the masculine energy than you do the feminine. I feel like this justice here is going to bring you someone that you could settle down with. Queen of Pentacles, ultimately. And if you're the feminine here, this feels more like you are coming out of this with more of a an anchored or grounded or rooted wife and mother energy, which is something you truly desire to be. It's very nice. It's very, very nice. No matter what, Spirit wants me to talk about this karmic retribution. No matter what you've done in your life, as long as you have learned the lessons associated with them and then <clears throat> put that into practice and make actual changes to your life, you will always be deserving of the best. I mean, you're always deserving of the best, regardless of what you've done. But you really need to put forth the effort to learn the lessons from whatever experience you've been through and then change for the better. And that is, in fact, lit that's literally the energy that would attract a Queen of Pentacles to you. Because the Queen of Pentacles is an individual who is unconditionally loving. She is a wife and uh, she's a fantastic wife and an excellent mother. And she is ever, ever supportive. Like she will be your rock through thick and thin, through all, uh, through hell, fire, and all kinds of shit. She will be there for you as long as you do your part, as long as you make the conscious effort to hold your own, to learn your lessons. You could fail over and over and over and over. But as long as you are putting in the effort to learn the lesson and make that positive change, your queen of pentacles will be there for you throughout. No questions asked, okay? But she is not going to give her energies, lend her energies to anyone less than an emperor or a king of pentacles, we'll say, okay? But when you grow up and show up, we'll say, you in fact bring justice into your life and you align with a queen of pentacles that will be right by your side forever, okay? I mean, she's even the type of energy where like, if you were to get married to this person, but then later on the road found out that you two needed to go your own separate ways, I mean, depending on how tumultuous that divorce is, she may even still be there to help you, to be your friend, to assist you in ways that you want, or that you need. That's the type of loving energy that she is when she's not pissed at you <laughs> or when she doesn't feel like she's been taken advantage of and now she's closed herself off. Because just as much as she will be there 
and open, be open and there for you. If you if if she if you get her to turn your back on to turn her back on you, she's just as distant as she was close, if that makes sense. All right. Okay. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Gemini. First hit of surrounding energies you have. Judgment. This is beautiful. Gemini, you are getting a second chance. You're aligning with it, but that's because you are doing the work. Three of Pentacles. To refine yourself to the, the self-mastery work. Yes? Judgment is coupled with the Seven of Cups. Okay. Okay. There are still some things you have to go through, though. There may be some confusion as to what you truly desire, where you're truly trying to go, what you're truly trying to accomplish. And that's okay. That's what's being symbolized here in the Hanged Man and the Two of Swords. You're still in this energy of coming to terms with things. Judgment is very much like justice, okay? in which the scales are balanced out and karma is doled out. The blessing in judgment here is that redemption is right around the corner. Like you get that balancing of the scales and karma is, is, you know, is dished out. But then there is also the option of being redeemed, of resurrection, of cleansing, of healing, of purification. Whereas justice is just that scale being balanced, karma being put out there, and then there you go. You just got to deal with it. Judgment is much more. Judgment is the healing or the, the cleansing from that. All right? So I do feel like you are in this, in this phase right now where you're literally, the, the, the angel is appearing before you and they're blowing their horn and you're rising from your grave and you're just, it's, you're just, you're just going through the motions. You're looking at all of the things around you that have <laughs> killed you, basically, I guess, because you're rising from this grave. And coming to terms with it, understanding it, getting some of the, less the, the lessons from it to then be purified and cleansed. Okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Gem Gemini, in the second half of your reading here, you have... Hey, now! The King of Swords. All right. This could be you. This also could be Aquarian energy or a Libra. But I feel like this is you. And it's a good thing. Um, you're being objective, clear and concise, diplomatic even. King of Swords is coupled with... Ooh, Page of Swords. Now here you are. I see the pages and the knights as the mutable energy. So officially, this would be the page of swords would be you, Gemini. But I actually feel like both of these are you, king of swords and the page of swords. It's just that as the king of swords here, you're seeking the truth. You're looking for the information. You're sending out your scout, your sentry to say, all right, go find the intel for me. What do I need to know right now? How do I handle this situation? How do I approach this situation? For some of you, especially in terms of this divine partnership that's coming in <clears throat> for you or that's here for you that's helping catalyze or influence you um you may even be saying okay how do i approach this person how do we get this thing off the ground now also i i i should have said this before but it wasn't coming through but it's hitting me now the lovers isn't just necessarily a divine partnership the lovers is a balance between the masculine and feminine within you, finding that divine partnership within you that is allowing you to step into this emperor energy. Okay. But that's less, that's not as strong of a message that's coming through with the lovers in this case. Okay. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Gemini, you have, oh man, there's that ace of wands again. This time it's upright. Yes, all of the cards are upright now, but it's showing up in the challenge, which to me is representing how it's still probably a bit reversed. But you have this inspiration. You have this new direction that you've chosen that you want to move in. But you're in the process right now of figuring out how to do it. This is, the, with, to me, with the King of Swords and the Page of Swords together, this is like the process of building the logistics, of going about what it is, whatever creative endeavor it is that you want to move forward with, okay? Ace of Wands is coupled with, okay, the Six of Swords. Now, what this is saying to me is 
before, and this actually, this is the biggest reason as to why this Ace of Wands was reversed. So representing the blockage in moving forward in this creative endeavor, which came out in the pre-shuffle. In order for you to take up this endeavor, you have to move away from some things first. You have to do some clearing and some healing. And the Six of Swords is very much a healing energy for me. The Six of Swords is an energy of balance and harmony, but I, because of that balancing and harmonious nature, that feels like a bit of, an, uh, uh, of a, uh, a healing energy to me, okay? That would give way to some sort of healing. The harmonization would give way to healing, in my opinion, okay? So that's why that's a bit blocked. That's why this is your challenge right now. You just have to see through some things. You have clear, I'm hearing you have to see some things clearly in order to heal from them, in order to put them away so that you can move forward into this new creative endeavor that you're feeling. For some of you, this is really sexual. You really might be very, very, very attracted to somebody, <laughs> like physically, sexually, which is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Your closing message or potential outcome here in the second half of your reading, Gemini, you have the Nine of Pentacles. Excellent, strong, independent, confident, secure. These are all the things that I'm hearing with this card. And these are all the things that you are or you are in the, in the process of embodying. This is what you would be embodying or assimilating or integrating into your being as you move away and you do these, this healing from whatever this Three of Swords energy is, this self-mastery here with the Three of Pentacles, yes? Nine of Pentacles is coupled with, all right, the High Priestess. More, uh, this is some Piscean energy, well, uh, right, more Piscean energy because the Pis Pisces did come out in the Hanged Man. Um, but there are some down, there is some, yes, and I, did I see purple? I feel like I saw purple when I was, channeling when I was starting your shuffle. Um, but this would be that representation of the purple energy. Purple is divine wisdom. And so these are the, 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 the insight that you're gaining from the universe, the expanded vision, the expanded mind that you're acquiring from whatever the high priestess is revealing to you is helping to solidify your own sense of independence in the nine of pentacles. OK, <clears throat> and that's really going to help you moving forward. That's really what the holdup is here. You have to become and you may already be fi <clears throat> financially independent and whatnot, whatever, have doing your own thing and all that. But there is an inner sense of self. Ooh, I heard sobriety. Huh. Take that as it resonates. But there is an inner sense of self that needs to be fortified in order for you to really be the confident individual that you need to be in terms of this romantic relationship, this divine partnership, or whatever it is you want in a partnership moving forward, okay? If that's what we're talking about here for you. Uh, if, if, if we're talking about a romantic situation for you. If not, it's whatever your, your heart truly desires that you're moving towards, that you need to have this greater sense of independence. Okay? All right, Gemini. So now let's close out your reading with Oracle Guidance for your month. All right, Gemini. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus for the month of July 2019. Closing message, please. Spirit, form a Gemini's. Form a Gemini's. There it is. Card number 43. Come to life. Oh, wow. Oof. Okay, this is a longer one, but hang in there, guys. Bear with me. Here we go. Come to life. You are the most sacred of all sacred artworks. You are bringing yourself to life now, and this is how it must be. Of course, something being essential doesn't mean it will always be easy. You must support yourself and have courage during this process. Your monkey mind is not to run the show. 
It might have a lot to say, and at times it seems very convincing, but it is not the one in charge. Your mind can inspire you with ideas. However, it is the real you that speaks through your rebellious, rebellious sacred heart and is living your life, not the monkey mind. The mind is not much more than a swirling cacophony of habitual reactions. Beneath habitual thoughts, there is a deep, sensual, creative, and energetic awakening happening to you. It is so far beyond what the mind is now capable of controlling. Others might not like it because it shakes things up. Coming to life tends to do that. However, it is happening now, and the only real choice you have to make is how to deal with it. Coming to life means feeling. It might bring joy, but it could equally bring sadness, rage, or fear. <laughs> I just recognized we do have the counterparts in the King and Queen of Swords. That's cool. <laughs> okay, sorry, moving on. <laughs> um, shoot. I lost my place. Oh, okay. Coming to life means feeling. It might bring joy, but it could equally bring sadness, rage, and fear. It could bring all of these and more. Feelings will come and go quite swiftly when allowed to flow. You might need to paint, write, enact ritual, sing, or dance your feelings to help the energy flow. Don't hold back. Create the space for yourself to do it. In this process, you are uncovering the artistry of the, uh, of the universal creator. You are honoring the sacredness of life by exploring it without restraint, and that includes the flow of your feelings. You don't have to do anything with them other than express. You might want to analyze or you may not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are getting in touch with feeling. Learning how to access your feelings allows you to learn how to access your intuition, creative inspiration, and genuine internal guidance. These aspects flow from the same place and are often couched within your feelings in the form of emotions as well as physical sensations. The journey underneath the mind and into a sensual, emotional connection with your feelings, emotions, and body is for a sacred purpose. It is a part of your path. You are one of the sacred but powerful minority that have chosen to come into a body and live consciously within it. That may seem like it applies to everybody, but when you experience it for yourself, you will realize that this is actually rather rare. There are plenty of bodies without a spirit really residing within to care for, love, and honor them as a sacred animal. Fortunately, this minority is powerful enough to, that it can keep human culture in balance, but only just. We need every single one of us that is capable to be aware of the task and move beyond the mind and into the body. This is especially so if you have drawn the oracle of body beyond the mind, the heart beats. But we haven't. So moving forward. <laughs> to come into your sensuality, you will need to anchor your experiences. You may be blessed with relationships that are conscious enough to be interested in your journey in a constructive rather than controlling or undermining way. If so, talk, converse, share. If not, then you will need to be more resourceful in how you support yourself through your awakening process, at least until you attract some more conscious connections into your life. It is likely that these connections are already on their way, just because you are working with the energy of this oracle deck. This is especially so if you have also drawn this other card that we have not drawn. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You, have support, you can support your own process by scheduling time for yourself and keeping to it like you would the most important date with destiny. So get to writing in your journal. Do your dances. Paint your pictures. Create your creations. Be kind to your body. Listen to it and let it be alive. Even in times of pain, know that there will also be ecstasy and bliss as the process of healing and awakening continues. The message of this oracle is, be alive. Don't imagine you can go back to sleep. You are too awake for that now. There is no falling back into old ways. If you do so, it will be short-lived and won't feel the same as it used to. You may grieve this. You will certainly, eventually, celebrate it. You have crossed the threshold from an old way of being in an old life, and try as you might, you cannot return. It is better to let it go. Grieve if it, if grief, grieve if need be, celebrate if need be, or do both and move on into this moment. There is another adventure awaiting you now. 
You need a deeper connection to your own instincts, body, feelings, and intuitions so that you can receive this new calling. You can trust in it too. Embrace it and it will embrace you. So there you have it, Gemini. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. With that, I hope you guys have a great month and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of August. Yeah? Take care. Bye.